since I was in Great Falls working at the farm show most of the week, we're not having a normal on the farm weekly video, but I do have this clutch rebuild video I still hadn't gotten out yet. So that's gonna be the on the farm video for this week. And uh, if you guys have a clutch to rebuild, hopefully it's helpful for you. Our next step's gonna be putting this thing all back together. So what we're gonna do is take the shaft, get this end into that hole there, and then kind of pull this thing up and then put that little threaded cap onto that guy after we put that in there too so and everything's all cleaned up and ready to go now too getting everything slapped back together but it's actually a little bit easier if you take that little case and then you set it in something like a vise where it can actually stick through here that way when we're putting that little tiny collar in there it actually goes down all the way so that's the reason I'm kind of doing it like this is that way kind of gravity holds everything together then all we got to do is put the little threaded cover right on top of it like that and it makes everything nice and simple just getting ready to put the shaft back inside of the case here so we got this all cleaned up there but the one thing we want to make sure of is that we have enough room because the shaft is actually going to stick out kind of past the end of the case here quite a few inches so that should be enough there but that's just kind of one thing you want to be aware of and with our little drive shaft connector piece on there, we are pretty much all back together again, except for our main actual clutch over there that's sitting on the bench, but we're still waiting on parts for that guy. But man, that thing was not very fun to get on there. I had to get it on just a little tiny bit onto the shaft itself, and then I had to actually hammer it on the entire way. So it took like, oh, I don't know, 45 minutes, almost an hour, just hammering, taking a little break, hammer some more, take a little break. So it was a kind of a job getting that on there. It only took a few weeks, but I think we finally have all the parts for our clutch here. So we're going to try to work on this a little bit today and see if we can get it installed, but we might be hauling some grain later. So we'll see how far we get on this thing. I got the clutch sitting on the shaft there. However, we did have one little thing we messed up. So you guys could probably see our little grease tube here that goes in to the sliding part of the clutch here, which is this whole part. But where it comes out of the case is actually right here. So I need to be on the other side. So I'm gonna have to actually pull this thing off of here again, turn this thing around so it's lined up on this side. And then that way the hose can actually go across here and have enough room to be out of the way and then go through the hole. Just being on this side right now, it's way too close. We have too much hose not going to go in this hole very nicely and might get caught on some stuff now we should have this thing kind of set up in the right spot you guys kind of look in there you can see we do have a little gap there we're not hitting anything and then that hose just kind of goes right over the top there and it pops out the side and you can see it's definitely out of the way of everything now so it should be good now i just need to tighten that guy down and and we'll get to finishing this thing up next step is going to be our washer and then our nut and this nut's gonna get torqued down to 30 foot pounds. That's just to kind of seat everything. Then after that, we'll go an additional 150 to 180 degrees. And then that should be within spec. Also, sorry if you guys hear any dripping noises. I actually got the semi in here. It was covered in snow and ice, so it's just been kind of dripping all day. But I need to get this thing fixed also. However, we decided we'd get a new washer. So I'm gonna be taking this nut back off and then taking that old washer off of there. So yeah, it might be a good thing to do if you guys are rebuilding it as well as just getting a new washer while you have it all tore apart. It took almost a full month, but we finally got our brand new washer. So I got that put on there, got our nut all torqued down. Now the last thing we have to do is just put that brand new bearing on there. And we have a pretty neat little tool just for getting our bearing installed a little bit easier. So yeah, this is just a Bessie bearing heater and yeah we just turn this guy on there it'll start warming up i'm actually going to put the bearing on here first that way it gets hot and you just kind of set it on there that way it warms up the inner sleeve of the bearing there that way it just slides onto the shaft a whole lot easier and you do have to be a little bit careful with this thing because if it does get too hot the metal will actually kind of start sinking just from the weight of the bearing on top of it then when you're putting your bearing on there, make sure to leave a little tiny bit of a gap between the edge of the bearing here and then the end of the shaft. So it actually calls for 0.12 inches, I think. And we're just kind of about under an eighth of an inch here. So that's just about right. 
And with getting that bearing installed, we are pretty much all done with this thing. We're probably gonna have to adjust the actual clutch once we have it mounted back on our river engine, but for now, we're pretty much done. And the other thing is, guys, I am a farmer, so if you guys have any questions or comments on things I could have done better or done differently, please let me know down there in the comments. The reason I made this video was because I couldn't find any good videos on how to tear these things down and rebuild them. So hopefully this is helpful to anyone out there trying to do the same job.